Hey everybody, my name is New York John and I am a closet grower. I want to show you the 12 plants I have here in week 3 of flower. Uh, we're growing under 600 watt high pressure sodium right now. As you can see I've got an air conditioned. Uh, that's keeping the temperatures down. I've got an open hood reflector, no glass. Uh, the reason I'm not venting uh, is I have CO2 supplementation, which is uh, being metered over here and controlled by a timer. Anyway, what I wanted to show you guys today is that in addition to a calcium deficiency I was showing earlier this week, I was also showing magnesium deficiency on a lot of these plants. Now, you can use the grow book and equipment guide to help you diagnose any of these problems. There's pictures that correspond with some of the more common deficiencies, but in this case I'm looking at purple leaf stems and purple petioles. Uh, my plants are taking up a lot of magnesium is what that's telling me, and I'm running short. Magnesium is the central molecule to the chlorophyll ion, chlorophyll being responsible for photosynthesis. The more light, the more CO2, the more water, appropriate amounts of water and nutrients, that is, that I add, uh, the more photosynthesizing is happening. So, uh, again, we've got the smart pots, very, very, very healthy uh, under canopy, and I've got my trellis set up. This is a four foot by three and a half foot space. Let me show you what will fix a calcium magnesium problem like nothing else. Hey, right on the bottle, CalMag, CalMag Plus. So, they call it plus because it's plus 2% nitrogen, and it's actually got a little bit of iron in there. Now, I want to tell you something that I learned from the grow book and equipment guide. I read a couple pages on using nutrients right here, mixing nutrients, and the grow boss has your nutrient schedule basically broken down into profiles. Please read the book, please check this section before you start using nutrients willy-nilly. I'm going to talk about mag deficiency, but also how it relates to the instructions on the bottle here. See, now, Botanicare is telling me that I should, for every gallon, use three to five milliliters. Three being the weak end, and five being the strong end, and that's pretty much all throughout veg. I want to show you something. I've got some uh, rainwater here that I use uh, for my grow. Now, if you don't have access to rainwater, Get yourself an ultimate RO system at thegrowboss.com. They have different RO systems for different volume needs. I'm going to test this PPM with my crappy meter, and it shows me that it is 41. 41 PPM. Both of them. Okay, 43. We'll call that 40 PPM to start with. I want to show you. I'll take the heavy dosage. I have here a little baby feeder that I have dialed in for five milliliters of fluid. And I'm going to put that in the one gallon and give it a stir. And I'll show you what's going to happen here. Is that my PPMs are going to have raised 200. I'll show you this right here. So give or take 200. However, if I'm in week four of flower, I look up my nutrient profile and I see that based on the grow boss's recommendation and the PPM calculator, I should be feeding, well, 30%. If I'm feeding on a thousand watts, my 30% is going to look like 300 PPM. So let's take another five. We're gonna add it to this and give it a stir. And then I'm going to take another two and a half. 2.5, there we go. And give that a stir. This is the same amount of water, just 2.5 milliliters more should get me to that 300 ppm marker. There we are, 366. So I've effectively raised just upwards of 300 ppm. Now, I never would have known that if I hadn't read these five pages on mixing nutrients. Now if I've learned that in five pages, what can you learn in 160 pages? Thank you. Next week you can expect to see my flowering garden looking a lot less drawstringed on the top leaves and also looking a lot less 
purple in the vein. I look forward to seeing this garden swell up and I know that I'll have the grow boss to blame for it. Thank you very much.